Okay, let's start with methane, CH4. This is what your model should look like. It is a tetrahedral molecule, and we're going to say that it is not polar. Now remember, for a mo molecule to be polar, it must not have an inversion center or more than one rotation axis or a mirror plane that does not include the principal rotation axis. Now, as you can see, this has four rotation axes. If I spin it around this one, uh, let's get it right under here so you can see that. There you go. See that? I spin this and it's going to look the same every 120 degrees. But I can also turn it like this. And so it's going to have four axes like that along which I can spin it and it'll look the same every 120 degrees. So this is definitely nonpolar. Another way, a simpler way of looking at it is um, you can't split this into uh, positive and negative sides. Now we're going to go with a simpler way of looking at polar bonds. If the two elements are different, are different elements, then we're going to say that the bond is at least somewhat polar. So these are all um, polar bonds, and but that doesn't mean it's it's a polar molecule because they're all um, canceling each other out in a sense. Let's stop your video now and make the next molecule and then uh, play your video again to see the answer and to check yourself. Okay, the next molecule is right here and um, you can see we've got, uh, we've got a carbon, this is CCL2F2 and I'm going to say that these are the two, the two chlorines and these are the two, the two fluorines. Now, in this case, if we, if we use the same criterion and say, okay, does this have a rotation axis? No. How about along this one? No. This, see, this won't look the same until I turn it 100, I mean 360 degrees, then it'll look the same. And that's going to be the case on all these axes. The other thing, way of looking at it is if I were to, say, divide it right here, I would have two sides of the atom that look different. One of the sides has the chlorines and one has the fluorines. And fluorine is more electronegative than, than carbon and even than chlorine. So our negative side of the molecule is going to be over here and our, our less negative side over here. So this molecule is going to be polar according to our criteria. Now go ahead and stop the video and then build your next molecule and start it up again to see the answer. Okay, the next molecule is PH3, phosphine, and it looks like this. It has a trigonal planar geometry. I'm sorry, trigonal pyramidal geometry. Now, you might notice that you cannot use the gray ball for the phosphorus because that is drilled for an expanded octet, which has the wrong, wrong angles for this molecule. This molecule should have the trigonal pyramidal geometry and as you can see it is it's got a nice rotation axis here but it doesn't have more than one so um, again our symmetry criteria says for a molecule to be polar it must not have an inversion center or more than one rotation axis or a mirror plane that does not include the principal rotation axis and we don't we don't have any of those criteria here and so we can this might be polar now let's look at it another way if we look at it like this we see that the carbon is out of, it's not in the same plane as the hydrogens. So if we were to, to split, to kind of divide this molecule, say right here like this, we would see that we would have two different sides of the molecule, one more electronegative than the other. And so this pH3 is going to be polar according to our criteria. Go ahead and stop the video and turn it back on when, you're, when you've built the next model. Okay, here's our next model. This is ClO4 minus, the chlorate anion. And now, of course, this is an ion, so it's going to behave differently than a neutral molecule. But in terms of our polarity criteria, what would you say? This is actually exactly the same case as methane. So this is going to be nonpolar. It's got all these nice rotation axes 
everything's the same all the way around. So there's not going to be a negative side and a positive side to this molecule. Stop your video and let's see the next one. Okay, this is the carbonate anion, CO3 2 minus. This has a double bond here, which gives this a trigonal planar geometry. And as you can see, it's got a nice rotation axis here. And if you remember that this, this double bond is not actually locked into place here, it's shared among all three positions. And so all of them are exactly the same. So this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Go ahead and stop your video. SIS2 is the next one. It's going to look just like CO2. It's a linear molecule. It's got, I'm sorry, this is SISE2, but again, it's going to look just like CO2 because silicon and carbon are in the same group, and then selenium and oxygen are in the same group. So this is just like CO2 would look, which is nonpolar. If you think about it like this, sure, the oxygen is, is able to hog the electrons in these double bonds and pull them towards itself, but it's pulling. This, by the same amount in both opposite directions here. So, so that is going to make this a nonpolar molecule. So it's got, it's got a lot of symmetry. Again, that's SISE2. Stop your video, build the next molecule, and then play again when you've, when you've built it and when you've answered the questions. Next molecule is carbon monoxide. It's got a triple bond between the carbon and the oxygen, and this is going to be polar. These bonds are polar. The oxygen makes itself kind of a negative end here and leaves a little bit of a partial positive charge on this end because the oxygen is hogging the electrons, which makes this the negative end, this the positive end of the molecule. And remember, we're not saying that this is an ion. This is a neutral molecule. It's got the same number of electrons and protons in it but the electric, the negative charge is, is shifted toward this side a little bit. There's an imbalance. So there's a little bit more negative charge over here than over here. That is carbon monoxide. Go ahead and stop your video. Build the next one. Describe its geometry. Do a little sketch and tell me whether it's polar or not on your worksheet. And then when you're ready, turn this video back on to check yourself. This is the next molecule. PF5, phosphorus pentafluoride. Now, this might be a little tricky to you until you realize that this thing has got a lot of symmetry. It's got a nice rotation axis here, okay? And it's also got rotation axes on these, right? So it's got a whole bunch of rotation axes. Um, it's got it's got a mirror plane that doesn't include the main rotation. The principal rotation axis is this one here and it's got a mirror plane that goes through here. So this is not polar. And by the way, this is triangular bipyramid. Okay, to make the next molecule, we're gonna make methanol. And I'm gonna just do this right here because I've gotta scavenge some parts. So, to make methanol, we've just got one carbon, and we're going to have three hydrogens off of that carbon. Then we're going to have an oxygen. and another hydrogen off of there. Now this is going to arrange itself kind of like this. Maximize the distance between the hydrogens and that is our methanol molecule. Now we can't just describe it with a simple geometry. What I would say is it is bent around the oxygen and tetrahedral around the carbon. So right here this part is a tetrahedron but this part course is bent. Now is this polar or not? We're going to say yes. The oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, so it's going to have a bit of an excess negative charge up here, more positive charge on this side of the molecule, and this is uh, very polar.
actually. So that is methanol. Now let's stop your video, build the next one, which is acetone, explain the geometry, predict the polarity, and then turn this video back on to check yourself. Okay, now we are building acetone, and we're going to need three carbons for that. And if you notice in the structural formula, it's um, in the, the formula that they gave you there, CH3, CO, CH3, that's called the condensed structural formula, and that's giving you hints about where everything should be on this molecule, because there's more than one way to build this, which you may have discovered. So what I've got to do is build it in the order that they hint at in the formula. In other words, CH3, so the formula says CH3, then it says C, and it says O. That means there's an O attached to this middle carbon. So I'm going to take one of these, plug it onto this middle carbon like this, double bond it, and then I'm going to put another three hydrogens on the other end. There you go. Now this is acetone. A lot of symmetry going here. I mean, this does look like a pretty symmetrical molecule, but what does it say? For a molecule to be polar, it must not have an inversion or more than one rotation axis or a mirror plane that does not include the principal rotation axis. This does not, the only mirror plane this has is right down the middle like this and then right down the middle like this. Both of those include the principal rotation axis, which is right along the center, down, down the, the oxygen carbon axis here. So this might be polar according to our symmetry criteria. And if we take a close look at this, we'll see that this highly electronegative oxygen is going to make itself a little negative point right here, with this being the more positive side of the molecule. So this is a polar molecule. That's acetone. Go ahead and stop your camera. Build the next one. Okay, here I am, I'm building hexane. And this is just six carbons, it's a very simple molecule. Six carbons, all with a bunch of hydrogens filling up their octets. So we've got something like this. go. Now, is this polar? Well, I think, um, I don't see a heck of a lot. I think the symmetry is actually similar to, to the acetone molecule that we saw, where we do have a rotation axis like this around the center of this here, looking down on it. But that's about all we've got. And then we've got a mirror plane uh, in a similar way. We've got a mirror plane through the middle, going down like this, and then one going through here. We don't have a whole lot else, so it's similar to, to um, acetone and symmetry, except I don't have that oxygen sticking off. In fact, it's totally surrounded by hydrogens. And so we're going to say that this is not polar because it doesn't have a positive and a negative side. So our symmetry criteria here, let's, let's see if that would work for us. It, it can't have a rotation axis that does not include the principal, um, I mean a mirror plane that does not include the principal rotation axis. And uh, we don't have that. But how about more than one rotation axis? No, we don't have that either. So we can't, our symmetry doesn't help us here. And remember, the symmetry just, just basically gives you criteria that will rule out polarity. It can't be polar if it, if it has those criteria. But in this case, we have to use kind of our more hand-waving 
explanation that this doesn't have a positive and a negative side. All right, now we're going to build the second to the last one. And that is acetylene. Acetylene has two carbons, triple bonded together, like so. Two hydrogens sticking off the end. Now this is not polar for the same reason that, say, CO2 is not polar. Um, Sure, it's got some polar bonds here according to our criteria, but both ends are exactly the same. So this is whatever partial positive charge we'll have over here, we'll have the same partial positive charge on this end. So this is a nonpolar molecule. That is acetylene. And lastly, we're going to do diethyl ether. And so if you haven't built this one yet, then please stop the video and build it, and then turn it back on and we'll watch for the, the answer here. Okay, we're going to build diethyl ether, and I've got, um, basically what that means is we're going to have two ethanes. Now an ethane molecule is, is two carbons with our hydrogens coming off like this. That's basic idea. So we're going to have two of these, but they're going to be bonded together with a hydrogen in the middle. So, I mean uh, an oxygen, sorry. So this is going to be a thing like this. And... It can be a little tricky to figure out how this is all going to swivel together. But we'll try to get a feeling for that. Remember, they're going to kind of rotate. They're going to maintain the correct angles, but they're going to rotate so that the distances are, are the distances, sorry, are all maximized. And so this one is going to do something like this. like this. Now this is similar to acetone if you remember. We can rotate it like this, right? And we have a rotation axis there. But that's all we've got for a rotation axis. And we don't have any mirror planes that don't include this principal rotation axis. So this could be polar according to our criteria. If we look at this, we might think, that, sure, this might be a little bit polar because this negative charge is going to make maybe this side of the molecule a little bit more a little bit more negative than, than this side. But because that oxygen is kind of pushed down into the center, this thing isn't going to have a whole lot of, not going to have a whole lot of polarity. So I would tend to say no on this, or maybe I would say very slightly polar. All right. And that does it. Thanks for playing.